Hello, in this video we are going to look at how conditional statements work in validity. So a conditional statement is a statement that allows you to well, check for a certain condition. If it's met, then act accordingly. And if it's not met, also act accordingly. If you're familiar with other languages like JavaScript, C++, Java, you know, any of the big ones really, you'll feel right at home. So let's show an example if statement. So in this method where, when, where we are getting input from the user, we are going to check the, the data. So we're going to say if, so this is the structure of either the keyword if, when you put brackets, if, so this is the condition x, let's say double equals. So the double equals means you are checking if it is equal to something. Single equals is assignment, double equals is a comparison. And if it is equal to five, for example, we will multiply x by, let's say, four. For some reason, we want to not, ooh, we've done it to the power of four. We want to multiply by four. So it actually would do x equals x times by four. For some reason, if it's five, that's what we're gonna do. So if we click create, and if I click get, it just gets a zero. If I set the value to four, set get, it gets four. If I put the value of six, set get, it gets six. Put the value of five, set. And if I get it now, it gets 20, because this condition has been met. Another thing that we can do, let's just comment this out. So comment it out, we can check. So again, we'll just stick with checking if it's five. So if it equals five, maybe that's an invalid value. And we just want to get out of this function and instead of triggering the rest of the code. So we can use a return statement, but we can do it without a value. So we can just do return semicolon. But this just gets out of this current function if this condition is met. So if I were to run this, get, we get zero. If I set the value to four, click get, we get four. If I set the value to five, it just gets four because five was never set because the condition was met here and then it got out of the method. So, let me comment this out again. Let me just do another if statement. And you can check for other conditions, right? It doesn't just have to be if it's equal to something. You could do if x is not equal to five, so that the not equal is exclamation mark and then equals. And if it's not equal, then maybe we return. So the only value that we're accepting is in this case is five. So if we create our contract, click get, zero. If we set it to four, set, get. It's not getting anything, or it's still getting zero because it's not getting set. If I set five, it gets it because that's a valid value based on our condition. And let me show you another thing that you can do. And you don't have to just do it with integers. You can do it with booleans and strings. And obviously with a string, you'll just be a, a string like so. It would just be something along the lines of this. And let me show you another thing that you can do. You can do this with numbers. So you can actually check if it's not just equal to or not equal to, if it's smaller than or greater than. You can check if, if x is greater than five, then we'll let's say return, so if I click create, if I click get, it gets zero, if I set it to three, three, if I set it to four, four, if I set it to six, it's not working because, or it's working, it's just not setting it because it's actually greater than five. Let me show you something else. What do you think will happen if I set it to five? Set, get. It's assigned the value, you might thinking, but it's saying only if x is greater than five, and it's not, x is actually five. If you want to be inclusive of the value, you just put it equals here. And this means if it's, <coughs> sorry about that. If it's greater than or equal to this value. So if I run this now, 
I click get and even in here if I put three it works fine if I put four it works fine if I put six it doesn't work or it doesn't assign it if I put five it doesn't assign it because it's not greater than or equal to or it is greater than or equal to hence why it's returned and finally let me show you less than or equal to and with this you just flip around the angle bracket so if x is less than less than 5 will return so let me get rid of this click create click get and now let's <coughs> again sorry about that let me type in free set get it's, it's under 5 so it doesn't get it 6 set get and it gets it because it's above 5 I'm not going to show you how to do if it's less than or equal to a particular value. I'll leave that to you because you've got the code for greater than or equal to. And that's it for conditional statements. Actually, there's one, actually one last thing I want to show you. So what we're going to do is comment this out. And say if, we, if, if x is less than or if let, uh, x is greater than or equal to 5 then we'll assign the value of x equals 10 else so this else is a fantastic little branch and what happens is this if statement is triggered if it's true so if this returns true then this is run and this isn't run but if this doesn't return true this is not run and it falls back on this. So you can have some default code that runs based on your little structure. And we'll just say x equals z, let's say one now. So if I click create, I click get, and obviously we haven't passed in a value yet. Now for the now for the set, if I click, let's say six, set, get, it applies 10. If I do five, set get still 10 because it's greater than or equal to if i do four set get it does one if i do zero set get it still does one because zero it does is zero greater than or equal to five no it isn't because it's less than so it falls back on this else statement so that is a little fantastic branch within coding within conditional statements like I said, if you've done JavaScript, PHP, C++, Java, and a lot of other languages, you'll feel right at home. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Solidity video.